viewers, welcome back to the self made Home Channel. That's a 2016 Toyota. It's the RAV4. It's got 34,000 miles and it's got no AC. Uh, the condenser's leaking. I'll bring you along. And to do this job, the bumper cover has to come off. So we're going to pull a few of the jiggly bits out of the top here. Uh, so we're going to start right here, I guess, with some 10 mils. So I'll take those two out. Try to remember the configuration of your fasteners here. It's the only, this is kind of the only oddball one here. These take a Phillips. A couple of these little fellas. And then we've got a couple of push retainers here. I'll pop them out. But this one has a funny shaped thing here on the top. I don't know what it's push on something but I don't see anything that pushes on but we've got that little fella right there and then these a couple of these can't really goof them up I guess so and that now you can take the cover off without removing the tire but I like to get it right out of the way grab the bar of praying if you have hubcaps remove them and then remove the wheel we'll need a flathead you got this little guy right here one way or the other it'll turn. Ah, you want our slot going that way. And then very gingerly, you got to work it out. It's like a pin there. So it's a quarter turn type deal. And then there's an eight mil up here that we got to get to. And that's just like a, you know, a coarse screw like that. So. And then we come down on the Just take this front mud flap off now I believe yeah so the three screws in the mud flap are a little bit longer than the other one I just took out so kind of keep track of you know who's who here for your own what happened ah, let's see here. and then that should yeah that should release our full and fender liner here to see what else we need to take off and then I believe just these screws across the front here really should be in good shape to start popping the bumper cover. Keep track of your, your jiggly bit. So this should pull out of here. So you have, you have to look at this clip when you put it back together. They're, I don't know, they have an opening, a slot on the inside that slides over this. It's on both sides. So just be mindful of that. You'll, you'll figure it out. You're a smart guy. And then we should be able to pull and just get the bumper cover to pop loose on the corner. Yeah. Boom. She's loose. Now we got to do the other side. And depending on your model, you're gonna to have to look because if you have fog lights, you're gonna to have to reach behind there and unplug those or anything else you see plugged in the front. But this car is pretty plain Jane. So even though this one didn't have the fog light package, you see when I pulled the bumper cover off, I should have took my own advice, but this was just plugged into a dummy connector. Uh, perhaps this is for the fog lights or some other options, but this was on the driver's side here. Maybe I think these, no, these ones right here, this is for the fog lights. So this one's taped up. So I don't know what this one's for. Um, I don't think it went into anything. Let's have a look. I looked, it was just a dummy connector. So we'll pull off the styrofoam here. The little absorber there, we'll set that to the side. And then it just appears we got a bunch of plastic stuff. Um, 
Looks like this has to go. This has to go. I think what I'll do at this point, I know the bumper cover had to come off. We'll look in service data uh, because if this plastic has to go, then this has to go. I, I'll kind of see the order of operation here. The lines look easy to get to. But I'd rather not do anything unnecessary if we can avoid it. So let me take a look. Boy, there's a lot of model options. Depending on the production date of the vehicle. So it must be some kind of mid-year thing for Toyota. We're going to pull the headlight out. I, I think it's pretty straightforward. We, uh, well, as far as what we got to do, I think we do have to take we have to take the separator support bar off here. We have to pull the headlight out. Feels kind of solid. So another bolt here on the inside. So it looks like four bolts on the headlight, perhaps. Yep, that feels a little looser. That feels better. I'll show you this here. I don't think we need to disconnect it, so I'll just set it right up here on top. Be out of the way. Set it right there. So there's the four bolts. You got three uh, wood screws and one regular machine type bolt. We have to take that off to get to this bolt here so we can pull this little upper support off so we can get the plastic off so we can get the condenser out. So I'll do the same thing on the other side. Got the three coarse screws on the top there. And then one on the side in the bumper cover. Or well on the you know the little bracket that the bumper cover clips into. And that's how you do that. Wanna stick this to the side too. You can, you can unplug them if you choose to, but if you don't want to fiddle with the connector, that's fine too. Then we got to work on getting this little guy loose. That doesn't look too terrible. I think there's a couple bolts. And then we've got a horn there. So we'll unplug it. Yeah! And then one more bolt. some plastic retainers, apparently. So there's that. We'll pull this plastic piece off here so we'll get these little retainers out. A few of them. Retainers here are. Might have to hold up on them and then turn them, maybe. Yep. So they're kind of like a Christmas tree fastener, they just push down into this threaded hole. So they're not really threaded per se, but it does help them come out because it pushes against the, you know, the female half of the threads anyways. But when you go to put them in, you can just click them in. Take that out, we'll set that up here. So here's a potential dilemma. We've got to pull these upper supports off here. These just hold the top of the radiator. Set that to the side, but we've got to get this bolt out of the radiator and something this this one looks pretty friendly These can be miserable. These can break off right in the radiator, but they're the up It's essentially this whole upper plastic support Goes on the donger here for the condenser. So we're just gonna give it a little clunk So this one come right out piece of cake easy peasy And it is the same bolt that goes up here, but I've seen where these are so crusty They get unfriendly. You could probably live without one but the problem is, if the other one breaks, 
and you didn't quote out a radiator, you could be kind of screwed on your estimate, but some of this stuff's unforeseen, you know? Lucky for us, they both came out. So this plastic thing should come up just enough to get our condenser to move forward here. Boom, look at that. And then we'll take off the other little support for the horn. I don't think we have to pull this plastic here. If we wanted to, we could pull it just a little bit. We could release just the upper little dog here that holds it in. It's got a couple of fingers on it. You know, if you thought that you had to kind of pull that out of your way, I guess any anytime you're messing with plastic, you always risk breaking the retainer. So I don't think we even need to to move it, but that'll give us a little extra room, anyways. We can do it on this side too. Say push, push, boom, and then that'll give us just that little extra room to tip things to the side. There's that. Wrong size, Phil. There's that. We'll get that right out of the way. And I think that should be it because now she should slide up. And we have to unhook the lines. Make sure you discharge your refrigerant before you do that, though. This is where all the magic happens, folks. Goes into the gas, comes out of the liquid by condensing in the condenser. All right, cover your eyes just in case you forgot to discharge it. Oh, we didn't. Plus this has a big old leak, so it was discharging itself naturally into the environment. I'll show you where these things leak. They're kind of a piss pot to test inside the vehicle, but I learned my lesson on these a while back. And right here, folks, is where these things leak, and they will leak profusely. And I've seen, a, uh, this is my third one that I've seen, and no oil staining, no nothing. You could fill this thing full of dye, it'll leak out overnight, every night, and you'll never see anything gather here, but it, it leaks like a sieve under these brackets. And it's kind of a pisser to see, but you get your gas sniffering up here, and you get even close to this thing, it starts going crazy. But with all the crap on it, it's kind of hard to see these. But if you've checked everything on these RAVs and you don't find a leak, take the time to tear some plastic off and get up here. And I guarantee you that 60% of the time, every time, it'll be leaking right there. Ta-da! There it is, folks. Now, I get these little guys right from Toyota. Now Toyota, even themselves, they have their good brand and their crappy brand, or their cheaper line. They're not a huge difference in price. This is their OEM one right here. We're gonna add just a whisker over an ounce of oil to it. The nice thing about Toyota, it comes with it. Uh, so uh, some ND8 car air conditioning compressor oil, 40 cc's. So that's just a whisker over an ounce. It's like an ounce and quarter or so. So we're just gonna dump her here. Because there's always a bit of residual that gets left in the condenser. Usually if you look in service date, a lot of times they'll have generalizations in place for component replacement. For example, if you're replacing a condenser, you know you add an extra you know ounce to the system. If you're doing an evaporator, you add so much compressor lines, so on and so forth. Well there's a different spec for doing compressors, but you know what I'm saying. And then it's weird when you buy these from Toyota, they come with the desiccant pack and the plug that goes in the dryer here on the end of it, but it already comes pre-installed. It's really bizarre. I don't know why they send it, um, but they do. So there's that. I'm gonna put the uh, plug back on it here just so we don't get it contaminated. Let it sit like this for uno momento. And uh, Oh, before you take your other one and head off to the scrapyard to get your 50 cents, make sure you pull the rubbers off the little dongers that stick out on the ends here. So, because you're going to have to transfer them over. 
Sometimes, once in a while, these will stick inside the vehicle. Make sure this plastic plug here in the end is tight. It's quite a long plug goes up in there and this is where the desk kit pack sits. So be mindful of that. Like I say, it does come with one. You can always double check to make sure yours has it in it. But uh, yeah, that's that. I've never tried putting an aftermarket condenser in these. I don't know if they fit or if there's problems there, but usually if I'm doing condensers, I like to buy OEM because you just know they fit. Alright, everything is looks good down here except for this leaf. Get that out of there. Make sure you don't gouge up the radiator or the condenser on the way in. Very gingerly set it down. You might have to pull that bottom line out a little. Guide yourself in. And that's that. And then just put it together and you're done. Pretty easy, right? But yeah, in all reality, they're not too bad to do. About like most AC condensers in cars nowadays, you know, you pull the bumper cover off and yada yada, as they say, yada yada. Make sure that's down. Don't go hog wild on these ones that go in the radiator. They they literally go into plastic. Yes, there's a metal sleeve in there, but you got to calm down. Don't use the half inch Ugga Dugga gun. Use the 3 8 Ugga Dugga gun. If you can't control yourself, use a ratchet. Okay, and then don't forget to click the plastic thingy back in here. All right, so it lines up. Peek peeing a little bit of our oil there. Now, make sure you check the condition of your O-rings and replace if necessary, or just replace them if you're unsure. These ones look to be in beautiful condition. Near mint. So I've elected to reuse them. Now maybe you guys down in the comment section can Comment whether or not you've used the Toyota Economy uh, brand of AC condensers before. I always thought it was kind of odd, like when you check with Toyota, and the first question I asked them is, you know, do they use them? And the answer there was no, because they're not allowed to use them for warranty purposes. So I thought that was odd. Like I say, they're not a huge savings anyways. Now those just go into aluminium, so obviously use your noodle. And as if, as most of you know who watch our channel for any time, you know I'll be coming back to torque all these to factory specs anyhow. So we're just doing this kind of just for show and tell at this point. That baby's gonna have to move. So we'll leave that a little on the wiggly side. Doing it wrong. Right? Who's got to go on first? This little guy? Yeah, you betcha. Huh? Put the cart ahead of the horse. Classic. Won't be the first time you do something like that, but that'll piss you off. You get everything all tightened down and ready to go. Only to find out you gotta take it all back apart. Right? And then the metal piece goes on. Yes, sir, I think that's correct because remember we had the plastic clips that went through there. There are four. We have to do it in this order. Now we're talking. So we'll put our two plastic retainers in here. I knew something didn't feel right. Then we've got the bolts.
you got these little guys, you got all these little guys. headlights do have a little reveal right here that goes around this fender so you kind of got to be careful figure out the right method here let's see that one went down that goes down to that slot right there just making sure we got it going the right way So the little peg, let me show you something here. So the little yellow peg that the screw goes through, the light actually picks up over it and clicks onto it because it sticks up a little. So make sure you get that on there before you just go whacking it down with the impact. And that's where the little coarse threaded screws go, is into the plastic. So just use your noodle. Let me get an impact here, let me show you. Just don't be stupid, all right? That's why I tell my kids all the time, just don't be stupid. That's all I ask. And then there's one screw from the side. That's a machine type screw. And then just do the same thing on the other side. So yeah, it's kind of funny that the you know cars really aren't made of much in the front end. You know, there's people down in the comments right now saying how crappy this thing's made, and how chintzy they look. And, but honestly, you pull the bumper cover off any car, there's really not a lot behind it. And it is quite amazing to me how engineered, how well engineered they are. Uh, not just Toyota, but cars in general, as far as safety. You know, you look at them and you think, oh, you got to have these big chrome bumpers like back in the day. Back in the day when you stuck your face through the dashboard like a man. But, you know, those cars would kill you. You know, uh, non-collapsible columns and just, you know, big massive full framers and stuff. And then you compare them to, a, you know, crash data of, you know, a car like this, it looks like a tin can and these hold up better. It's pretty, pretty good engineering if you ask me. Cars in general amazed me i know people get pissed like oh i can't believe my car quit i'm like i can't believe the damn thing runs to begin with you know if you think about it gosh you got this giant tin can rolling with you know in most cases nowadays 25 plus computers in it miles of electrical wiring and in most cases they'll go you know well over 50,000 miles without having major issue or 100,000 miles so if you want to put that in perspective, if you go 100,000 miles in your car, I'm amazed that it runs. You go 100,000 miles without any major breakdown, you know, it didn't leave you walking. That's enough to drive around the world. Circumnavigate the globe four times. So think about that the next time you're pissed that your car broke.
I mean, don't get me wrong, I think cars are stupid and all the stuff that's on them is getting a little bit ridiculous. But it is quite a miracle that it really works most of the time. We're gonna push this fender liner <coughs> all back in. And then we gotta find the bolts here. Let me sneak right behind you there, fella. And then remember, this one went in all sideways slotted. Well, these things can be a bit of a piss pump here. Let's see. Oh, you know what, you ding dong. I was gonna plug in that plugger back here. I forgot to do that. We don't want that thing getting full of crud. Okay. Hand up through on the back side. Okay, there she goes. She's all the way through now. There's that, my guy. And then we'll take your classic. Oh, did you guys even see that? That was right here. Well, hopefully. We'll come right like this. Put that one in. You can just give that one a hand. They just go into plastic. So now yeah, we need to get this correct. So we'll slip that one up in the slot. So this is that one that has the little that little action going on in there. So make sure you get that right. Make sure everybody's on the right side of the plastic. As they should be. Now it's gonna be your shorter screw that goes up here. We'll just stick that there. And then you've got the three long ones in the uh, front mud guard here, I guess they call it. And then it has a little clicker that you know, holds it up in there for you. Oh, that's it, put your wheels on. And at this point, you have to bust out the vacuum and uh, pull a vacuum on this thing for you know at least 10 minutes or so, getting the moisture out of the system. I suggest if you uh, do this job, you know, take it to a shop, have it evacuated, do your repair, and then take it back to a shop and have it you know professionally charged. That way, you're not using the cans from the parts store. You make sure all the moisture is out of the system, and you know, both you know, do it the right way. Uh, so that's what we did here. We charged her up 550 grams. Uh, of course, we already put the oil in it. Make sure the center vent temperature is nice and chilly. Uh, and another uh, free tip Friday for you when you're putting your caps back on, your high and low caps, make sure they have an O-ring in it that's part of sealing up the entire system. And that's that. Ship it, send it down the road. Make sure you've gone through, retorts all your fasteners back to factory specs naturally. And then when you're done doing that, Head in the comment section, the questions, the comments, the insty, the Facebook. You guys know what to do. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.